Hey everybody, it's Ian the Off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. Recently, Stephanie and I did a artist chat about everything related to quilts, photography, and just about everything in everything. between. All the things. We got a lot of questions. We, I reached out on social media asking for your questions on just about everything that an artist could talk about. And we got a lot of questions about quilt photography and some best practices, tips, tricks, all that kind of thing. So I thought we'd break it out into its own video. If you haven't checked out the interview, make sure to go back and check out that video because it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Talking <laughs> about art and photography and quilting. But I wanted to bring this video out on its own because I feel like there's a lot to talk about here and 100%. this this is its own separate video. So we're going to talk to Stephanie a little bit about quilt photography and all that goes into it. So I'm going to let her take over and talk about her tips and tricks for taking the best photo. Sure, sure. So a couple of things. Um, I realize not everyone has a studio at their disposal. So I wanted to make sure and keep this limited to things that you, you would have, like the ability to lay a quilt up on a wall or hang it one way or another, and then basic window light. So all we've got going right now is a window off to this side and then overhead lamp fan um, going. So this is all something that most of you who are photographing in your own homes would probably be able to recreate. Um, and most people are going to be using an iPhone, iPhone or a cell phone to take their photos. I know that you have a lot of equipment that you right. use, a lot of, of very expensive cameras. Yes. So I know a lot of people don't have those, but these are these still work for iPhones and for absolutely. cell phones, right? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. So anything that you want to create, um, we're going we're gonna to talk about should be accessible to anyone with a window and or a fan light or a ceiling light and then an iPhone or mobile device camera. So um, the first thing is I want to talk about the sizing of a quilt. So one of the things that I struggled with when I started helping Ian take pictures of quilts is making sure I get the whole thing in the frame yeah. because the, the more that you zoom out, you get a little bit of warping um, and that can make it really hard to make your edges look straight. So the further back you can be from your quilt without having to like zoom out, the better because that's going to keep it more to the normal perspective that you would see with your own eye. If you don't have that space, that's okay, but just know that when you do kind of zoom out of your camera, it's going to create that warping and make your edges look either curved or kind of concave. So keep an eye out for that if you can and scoot back as far as you can to get a picture of the full quilt. Doesn't help that my quilts can sometimes be Enormous. scooped out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so that's tip number one. Um, tip number two is to go as close to white lighting as you can. Overhead right now, we've got some really Really yellow lighting um, but window light is going to be your best source in broad daylight the brighter the day the better um, the white light is really going to maintain the authentic color of your quilt mm -hmm. so the more yellow incandescent lighting that you have um, just know the more it's going to change your colors especially if you have a lot of white like there's a lot of white in this quilt if I have really yellow lighting overhead it's going to change this to kind of more of a dingy yellow so if you really want authentic colors daylight or white light. Uh, I know like they have different types of bulbs. So if you can get those white or daylight colored bulbs, those are going to be best for indoor photography if you're using something like a ceiling light. Now, if somebody's using the light coming through a window, I've heard a tip of taking, you know, purchasing a white bed sheet and putting it over the window because that will help disperse the light. Yes. So it's not harsh light, but it's also helping to kind of filter it, give you a more even uh, covering of light and help light up the room a little bit more, right? Right. So a couple of, that's actually a great idea. You can take a quilt, it will diffuse the light, but you want to stick with a really, really thin quilt or even something sheer. Um, would be perfect because it is going to let the light through but it's going to kind of disperse it a little more. Um, if a white sheet you're finding is covering up the light too much, what you can do is actually use it like a reflector and you can hang it on an opposite wall oh. from your light source and it will reflect the light back into the room. So you'll get a lot more light from both sides as opposed to one directional light just from a window. That's a good tip. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, so we've talked about kind of taking a picture of the whole quilt. Um, if you're looking for detail photos, so right now what we have lighting is coming kind of from all directions. It's called flat lighting. So we don't have really hard one directional light where you're getting shadows and things like that. Everything is lit pretty evenly, which is flat. And when you're photographing a quilt, that's the kind of light you want to go for. You want to make sure that the whole quilt is lit evenly. So if you're looking up here, 
and you see that it's a lot brighter because you've got a light source maybe over here and this this corner down here is really dark. So those are things that you want to look for as you're photographing the entire quilt too. When you're getting a little bit closer and you're trying to get those detail shots, if you're going for something that you're like entering in a quilt show, you don't really have a whole lot of room for artistic interpretation. Yeah. So you just want to get close with your flat light and focus on, like if you're using your phone, you can tap to focus. You want to focus on something of the detail. So that way that's really going to be nice and crisp and clear. Um, and you'll get things like the detail of the quilting or things like that. So when you're using your phone, you're holding it up and then you just tap on the area of the picture where where you want to focus and it'll create that that's where your focal point is and you'll be able to see those kind of details if you're going for something a little bit artistic that's where you get to have fun <laughs> that's where i start to get really excited about taking pictures of quilts because um, you can change a lot of things you can change the angle of the lighting you can change the angle of your camera you can change how far you're zoomed out or in. You've mm -hmm. got so many options to play with when you're taking pictures of your quilts for fun mm -hmm. One of, um, one of Ian's quilts had really, really great quilting. Um, it was a beautiful pattern. It had words in it and clouds and hearts and all of these beautiful things. And when you have flat lighting, you don't really get a lot of that. So what I did is I put my light source, the wind, but in your case, it could be a window, right here on the side of the quilt. And I actually shot into the light across the quilt like this. So I was literally right here and I shot into the light and it was a really cool photo the way that it came out and super highlighted that cool quilting um, and gave a good depth of field. So have fun, like have fun with taking pictures of your quilts because they're so beautiful and there's so many little details, those things that you love about your quilt that you're putting into it, capture those, capture those artistically with a fun photo. And remember you don't, you're not just limited to flat light, come up to it, take a picture flat. You can shoot across it, you can change your light source, you can zoom out, you can have a lot of fun with some of the options for lighting and photography. And you, cool. you can use what you have around your house as as well you don't like you can use the window you can a lot of times um, when people don't have like expensive lighting in studios and stuff like that um, people the best suggestion is to like face the window mm -hmm. and that light you know put the camera at the window and have that light coming from the window hitting you if you if you're doing you know a, a recording or something of you you can do that so you could put the quilt on the opposite wall mm -hmm. from the window or you could even if you want to get really fancy and do like some really cool shots you could shoot at night Ooh, when yeah. there's uh, when there's no um, light coming through the window or cover the window or you know something like that yeah, yeah. and use lamps again you'll have to worry about color temperatures so the yellow light bulbs the white light bulbs yeah. the different color temperatures that there are but you can place those around the room mm -hmm. to get different lighting effects and you don't a lot of times quilt shows when you're entering into quilt shows or whatever you they want very specific photos and they want very specific things that they're looking at but it doesn't stop you from having fun as well right. so like take those photos that are going into quilt shows you know what they're wanting and wanting to see and stuff like that but also use that opportunity you've already put your quilt up yeah. take that opportunity to take some fun photos and some different photos as well. And speaking of fun photos, some people like to take their photos outside. Whee! That's my favorite. So, <laughs> so talk a little bit about outside photography. Yes, okay, so natural lighting is one of my favorites. Um, I, I really love that. And I wanna say one thing real quick before we move on to that about taking a photo inside and putting your light source behind you. Make sure that it's an ambient light source. And what I mean by that is a wide light source mm -hmm. because if my light source is you, right? and I'm taking my picture like this, I'm creating, I'm casting a shadow yeah. on my quilt. So make sure that if you have a light source and you're putting your quilt on the opposite side of the light source, when you take your picture, check out your own shadow yeah. and make sure you're not doing that yeah. because you'll be able to see it and so will everyone else and not your beautiful quilt. So outside photos, great question. Um, First, let's talk time of day. Mm. So time of day is super important. You may have heard of golden hour. Yep. There's nothing like it. It's amazing. <laughs> it is like the birds sing, like deer come out. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Um, and that is if you have like no clouds, no nothing. It's mm -hmm. just, just sunlight. And that is going to be within an hour of sunset 
or sunrise. If you don't want to deal with that kind of timing and you don't want to deal with that kind of light, you can go like, I would say probably two to three hours before sunset or mm -hmm. two to three hours after sunrise, especially for people who aren't morning people. Um, and you get a very, <laughs> a very directional light. Mm -hmm. The time of day you want to avoid is from like 11 to one because your sun's going to be directly overhead. And even if you're in shade, you're going to get super dappily light, which is light coming through trees where it's kind of spotty. Mm. and it's going to show up on your quilt. And since you already have a lot of texture on your quilt, um, you don't want to add to it yeah. from inconsistent lighting. Yeah, that, it, the lighting at that time when the sun is highest, you're getting very harsh lighting. So it's really right. going to pull that quilting out and really show off, which can be a good thing, but a lot of times it's so harsh that it doesn't look good. It looks, it doesn't look good. Trust me, I've taken <laughs> those photos. It does not look good at that time of day. So you want more of that like non-direct light right. that will help to accentuate the quilt, not Mm, kind of muddy it up. It. Yeah. Right. So like if you think about it, if you've taken a picture of a friend in the middle of the day, that light coming straight down gives what I call raccoon eyes mm, because yeah. you're basically your brow is shadowing over your eyes. The same thing happens with the texture in a quilt. So you get these really harsh shadows that take away from the overall beauty of your quilt. So that straight that light that's coming straight down, that's what it'll do. So that's why we don't want to go in the middle of the day. Try and stick to the morning or late afternoon. That's going to be your best light. And also, I'm a huge fan of backlighting. So, for example, if it was afternoon, let's mm -hmm. say maybe like 5 o'clock, um, I would put this up so that the sun was behind it and I'm looking into the sun to photograph it because you get really beautiful glares. You get really beautiful light work. If that's not your thing, that's okay. You just turn around and then your sun is behind you. But keep in mind, anytime you put your light source behind you, you're gonna cast a shadow. Mm -hmm. So work with those angles to see where you're getting the best light and really look at the texture of your quilt. Where are your shadows laying? Are they, are they kind of diffused and gentle or are they super harsh? And you can move your light around, play with it. I mm -hmm. mean, no one's saying once you put your quilt up that you can't move it, right? You can move it around and have some fun with it. I cannot tell you how many times I've moved a quilt <laughs> because I was like, nope, this isn't it. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, and that's another thing too, because there are some really cool, like architectural, architectural mm -hmm. yep. features that you may want to use for your quilt. Check it out before you go shoot yep. it so that you know what it looks like at that time of day. Yep. Otherwise you're going to get there and have like literally the perfect setup for your quilt and realize that the sun is just blaring yep. into it. I have made that mistake before. I've literally showed up because there's a beautiful spot. I was like, this is where I want to take the photo. Oh, no. I get there and it's the wrong wrong time of day uh, completely. It just yeah. does not work. Yeah. So check, check out the spots. It's fun to go scouting. I mean, if you've got a spot you're like, you're like, oh, that would be really cool. Check out that spot at the same time you want to take your shoot. So that way you know what it looks like yeah. when you get there and you're not having to move and finagle mm -hmm. a quilt, you know, around Absolutely. everywhere. So if you're wanting to enter shows and stuff like that, another great time to, another great tip for that time and tip is to do it outside. Mm -hmm. uh, do it outside, but you're gonna want a cloudy day. A lot of times people, I know you, she kind of argues with me a little bit on this one because she doesn't like the cloudy days, but a lot of times shows for what they're asking for, yes. a cloudy day is good for that because it's it's going to help prevent those super harsh shadows. It's going to give you the ability to show off your quilt rather than really highlight that quilting and, and create an image that's maybe not so great. Yeah. Um, and also you can do, you can also, if you happen to live in some place that's sunny 365 days of the year. Where is that? I don't know. But I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have, you know, if you don't have a lot of cloudy days, you can still take photos, but you have to figure out where those shadowy areas are going to be. I have seen a, a couple of people have actually taken their quilts and like used magnets. They'll sew magnets onto the back of their quilt what? and they'll hang it up on their garage door because that takes the light and bounces it off of everything else mm -hmm. and puts it onto the quilt. So it's their, their garage door is in shadow. 
there's not a lot of direct light hitting it, but there's a lot of light reflecting off of everything else, yeah. giving them a good light to shoot with. Yeah. So yeah, that's absolutely. another tip. Absolutely. Like your driveway could literally be a reflector and yep. that's totally awesome. I will say the more environmental you go, beware of, sh of uh, color casting. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you're shoot just like a yellow light inside, if you're outside in a super green area, you're yeah. going to get a green color cast. So keep an eye out for that as well. But I think the, the best advice I can give is if you're taking pictures of a quilt, whether you're inside, whether you're outside, whatever type of light you're in, is to look at the detail, mm -hmm. right? Take a test shot and then look at the detail and say, do I like the way that my shadows look? Am I seeing the detail that I want to see? And if not, then try and move, mm -hmm. move your camera, move your quilt, move whatever to see if you can get it to look like you want it to look by your end result. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of great tools for putting your quilt up and hanging it. Uh, Stephanie's studio has a very nice way for me to just throw a quilt up on the wall, but don't be afraid to use, I have used uh, pant hangers from, absolutely. Uh, you know, from Amazon. I've literally clipped them up at the top of my quilt mm -hmm. and then the frame that I usually use on my channel that you see all the time that I have a, a, a frame from Amazon. Like a backdrop. Backdrop frame. Thank mm -hmm. you. That was the word. I was looking for a backdrop frame. <laughs> There's a backdrop frame that I use and they're fairly inexpensive and you they know, really are. They're, they're fairly expensive and easy to obtain. Like 20, 30 bucks maybe. I think mine was a little bit more than that, but I bought you, some cheap ones. So yeah. They're... So yeah, it's easy to be able to put up the quilt using those tools and you will still like, for instance, if I use the pants hanger mm -hmm. that will be in the photo, it's, but a lot of people understand that, that you just can't throw a quilt up on the wall. It, <laughs> The, the, yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> so a lot of people are very understanding about that. I know when I first started quilting and wanted to show off my quilts, I got upset about like having something on there. But then as you scroll social media, if you look on Instagram, I see so many quilters who use those mm. tools to show off their quilt and it's okay. And of course, if you have a partner, a, a, a tall child or something like that, having them hold the quilts. Uh, I, I am not a, I'm not a tall child. Debatable. I'm, <laughs> having those people to hold quilts up is, is a great tool to have and look around you because yeah. there are so many different things uh, near where I live. There is an arch that mm -hmm. I could easily put a quilt onto those pants hangers and put the quilt up on to, like hang it off the edge of that yeah. and it will hold it up. So get creative. You don't have to, you know, there's no rules. There, there are no rules. There are no rules, but there are some really great um, other quilts quilt photographers out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the Night Quilter, if you go check out her Instagram, she has amazing, amazing. quilt photos out there. Yeah. Uh, she also teaches a class. I took her class at QuiltCon in 2022 great class learned awesome. so much and she really walks you through the process of not only like photographing full quilts but also the process photos so as you are working on blocks okay. as you are sewing as you are doing all the things yeah so you can really get not only the final product but you can document your process as you're working towards that final product so, That's so fine. yeah definitely That's so fine. yeah and if, if you have any other questions i'm sure ian can pass them along yeah. so if there's anything we didn't cover that you're specific curious about just yeah always ask, feel ask free. Ian and we'll talk about it <laughs> feel free to leave a comment in the comment section of this video and I'll make sure to pass them along to Stephanie you can also reach out to Stephanie yes. as well on her social media which are so I have my website is smurfree photo s m u r p h r e e photo.com and then I'm also on Instagram Facebook and TikTok under smurfree photo as well Yep. So you can reach out to her if you have any questions or leave them. I always enjoy your comments. So yeah. let me know if this video helped you on your quilty photography journey. I always love hearing from you. And uh, yeah, I thank you very much for talking Anytime. about it. And this is fun. Yeah, it is fun. It <laughs> is fun, it. Talk, it's fun <laughs> talking about photography and quilting and all the things. <laughs> Yes, all the things. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. And remember, guys, normal's just a setting on the dryer. Woo! Bye! Bye! <laughs>